Have you been watching the news over the last 48, 72 hours this week? It's Andy Nazaroff with the Nazaroff team. And in this week's Real Estate Corner, I did something a little different. I interviewed our mortgage partner to distill down everything that's been going on with the stock market, mortgage interest rates, um, the economy, and how it affects your ability to buy a home. So I won't waste your time listening to me. Here's the interview. So, um, Cynthia, thank you for taking some time out to um, let me interview you. I know this is off the cuff. I know this is unscripted, but um, you are uh, one of my trusted um, consultants, our mortgage partner at the Nazarov team, and just really wanted to um, uh, maybe, for lack of better words, um, record the stuff that we've been talking about over text and over phone about the series of events that's happened over the last few few days. And from coaching people that I have an opportunity to do with Tom Ferry and the very productive teams, there's a lot of confusion about what's going on. Heck, there was one that I had this morning, Cynthia, that they didn't even realize that rates had gone back up yesterday and he was about to record a video to all of his clients to tell them how low rates were. And I'm like, time out. Don't do that. That's not the marketing strategy we want to use right now. <laughs> no. So why don't you kind of like, let's just do a recap of what's happened in the last couple of days. Yeah. And I am, I mean, you know, I'm so grateful for the conversation because this has been making me insane. You know, I keep giving you the you people. Um, there just feels like there's a major disconnect right now in understanding as far as with, you know, it's all our real estate world, real estate profession, but specifically with real estate agents, lenders have more of a, you know, their arms wrapped around what's going on right now, just because we are living it, you know? And so we've been complaining in the office or here and there, I've been, you know, complaining to you that um, there is this sense that agents are like, oh, you know, well, yeah, things are weird, but market's great and you know things always correct themselves and we're over here like fire like in his armageddon we're freaking out you know because things are changing swiftly yeah and um they're changing like they've never changed before literally records are being set in the bond market and so i think and that's really where it starts you know i think we've been talking about that this is coming this is coming and we didn't quite realize you know the how swift <laughs> the change would be, yeah. but that's always that's always historically true, right? Right. So stock market takes a dump um, a little over a week ago. Yeah. It's first wave. Everybody anticipated over this last weekend, um, as we record this, it's March 11th. Everybody that anticipated this last weekend that come Monday it was going to take another dump, and um, about 2,000 points dropped. Um, the stock market was, uh, prematurely closed. It was shut down. Shut down as you <laughs> argued with me. I said it was closed. She goes, no, it wasn't. It was shut down. Oh my gosh. Uh, I just, heard that from another agent yesterday about lost my mind. I'm like, <laughs> like I am in a situation here. They didn't close the stock market early. Like it was, it was shut down. Like this is, these are, I mean, just what a time to be in it and to be able to see what's going on. And I think that things are going to progress. But what we're seeing is we're just seeing a lot of sharp uh, turns, a lot of jumping up, jumping down, jumping up, jumping down. So so let's finish that recap though. So Monday, the stock market loses 2000 points. Yeah. What happened to mortgage interest rates? Um, they, I would, I, I would say skyrocketed, but but they um, dropped first. I mean, Monday, everybody was bragging about, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. First crazy. half of the day, first half of the day was like real life was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, also you just can't respond fast enough. You know, all of a sudden everyone's calling in to lock or every people that have been floating or everyone's calling into refi and let me send you my docs and let me get numbers. And um, people are looking who are at, on a tight pre-qual or maybe looking, hey, well, does this mean, you know, I'm, I've been stuck at 300, does this mean I could pop to 320? You're just having all those types of conversations and there's really just not enough time in, you know, in that, that little window to have all those conversations because then things took a, you know, the market shut just because of the 
the sharp turn that was taken in the bond market specifically. So can you explain why rates would go super low and then just turn right back up? I mean, it was like a hundred basis points turn, right? Yeah. And it, <clears throat> so, I mean, that's a, it's a, I don't want to oversimplify and it's a tough question to answer directly because there are so many factors. So you know, there are a lot of things at play and, um, there really are a lot of factors. So it's not just the stock market. It's the, you know, this has been coming because of all the changes that were happening because of in, you know, we've talked about it in the fall, winter, the trade deal and the negotiations with China. Well, people started moving their money from the stock market to the bond market, which drove bonds down, which in turn affects interest rates. So that started. And that's kind of where you see that um, down ticking down of the mortgage interest rates. Then you have impeachment. Nobody is working in D.C. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, buyer uncertainty of the holidays. Um, and then with everything happening globally right now, with all of the toilet paper hoarding and whatnot, um, <laughs> that has created just a really, really strange climate as far as the stock market, because we are in a global economy you know, more than ever before. And I think as future progresses, we will always be able to say that, you know, next year we're going to say we're in a global market more than ever before. That's just the way that the world is progressing. So because of everything happening nationally and because of all the, or internationally rather, and all of the shutdowns and quarantines and, you know, everything else that created kind of a, a bizarre mix in our stock market and bond market. So when bonds got driven far so far, so fast, um, that's where you got those amazing interest rates because there is that correlation. But what that creates, you have banks that people are refinancing at such an incredible rate that banks didn't foresee losing all of that servicing. So there's also that piece that I feel like nobody's talking about, but that's absolutely at play here that big banks and really at all, you know, all banks kind of siphon up to the same, you know, I think there's like five or six real sure. banks. So they're losing on their servicing when people refi. They're losing that money in interest when people refi. And so there's so much shifting going on that they can't do math fast enough to, you know, uh, short anything or to mitigate any losses or to accommodate for that anywhere. Because really, what are the numbers? You know, it was happening so fast. So when things change at such a rapid rate and you're taking that servicing from those banks, that's where you see that rates to accommodate for those losses in the back, then you see rates spike up. I mean, bank to, rate to literally slow down, down the not, refinance. What was that? It was to slow down the refinance pipeline. Yeah, to slow it down and to mitigate their losses. They're going to have to recoup some of those costs with interest. But bankrate.com yesterday was not even advertising mortgage rates. They were like, no. They literally had like an error message. Like it just said, oh. nah, bro. Like it was, it was nothing. It was the most bizarre thing. In the afternoon, we checked because we're like, you know, we don't even know what's going on. So we checked bankrate just to kind of get a gauge. And they were in the fives, whereas one day before they were, you know, 3.25 was normal to us. They're in the fives and then cut to yesterday afternoon. And they're like, just kidding. No, no. The answer is no. Where did they end up yesterday? They were not advertising to the end of day. There's an error message. There's a message like input your email here. If you want us to update you when rates become live. Wow. Okay. Yes. So, so catch me up. Where are we at today? It's, it's Wednesday afternoon on the 11th of March. Yep. What's going and on? And we have had six reprices for the better and worse. Um, here's the thing. You can still, you know, rates still are dropping down and we still have not here seen, you know, the, how bizarre it's going to get as far as you know, I don't even want to say it, but uh, what's happening health wise medically right now um, and just how people are reacting. So I think that really in our economy, we really haven't seen where that's going to go quite yet. We haven't even we're responding to the global economy right now. We haven't even seen what's going to happen here. 
And I do think that rates will kind of trickle back. I really don't think that initially, um, of course, is speculation, but I really don't see them dropping back to the twos anytime soon. I really don't. They're not going to stay in those high ranges. I think that we're going to still be in the threes for a minute. But I mean, the thing that we've been saying to buyers, you know, it's really not a marketing ploy to say right. rates are not going to stay here. You know what I mean? And so a rate change could affect your payment, $50, $75, which, hey, that's not life changing, but let's get in while the getting's good because rates are still, we can still catch them in the threes right now. You've got to time it right. And I think you got to wait for some of this volatility to settle. But, um, you know, definitely right now is a window and it's something that we're still going to talk about, you know, remember when, when rates were. So, so speak to, um, I know your, a lot of your message has been to the, the real estate agent that is looking for more information. What's been happening? Why is it happening? How do I communicate it to my consumer? But speak to the buyer right now that isn't under contract, that sees what happens in the last 48 hours and goes, I'm just going to wait to see them drop. What would you say to them? <laughs> what would I say to them? Um, well, because I think there's a misnomer, Cynthia, with like, I'll wait to see them drop. They don't get the property under contract. Right. And you can't lock your rate until you're under contract. So right. can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah. And I think that that exactly that phrase that you just shared, Andy, is just such an important education piece to really explain to the buyers what they're saying and the implications of, of what they're communicating. So it's easy for them to say something so simplified, like, you know, I'm waiting for housing prices to drop. I'm waiting for rates to drop. But I think we've really got to talk about and always, just like you say, always ask the questions. Well, why? You have to really lead them through their logic. You know, okay, what are, what is our goal? What are you specifically waiting for? If you can qualify, if you can afford a house right now, then right now is when you buy the house. That is solid logic. Housing prices where they're at, rates where they're at, if you can afford the house now, then that's when you buy the house now. As a renter, you're paying a mortgage. You are paying a mortgage. You're just not paying your mortgage. Right. But you're paying a mortgage. Make no mistake about that. But with rates where there are, it is obvious to us, and it's obvious if you look at any historical data, that the trajectory that they've been on, they're not going to stay on. So if it were me, I would not, I would not wait for an interest rate to drop. And I don't think, um, I just, I don't think that risk is worth the reward. I mean, where are they really going to drop to? I really appreciate that, that um, candidness, that candor, that, that I think on the flip side, a buyer needs to know you can help them the moment the rates drop when they're under contract. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, wherever, wherever rates go, like you said, I think it's important for a buyer to understand what that means is that you can't lock in until you are in escrow. And it is clear that we are in a very specific window of time where rates are on the lower side. We can still lock in in the threes. So okay. you were waiting for rates to drop. Well, they did, and you missed that. <laughs> so locking in now, you're going to be in the same boat. So you missed the twos. You missed it. They're gone. Yeah. So let's lock in in the threes. Yeah. Let's get in a position. Let's have the conversation. Let's get educated. Be ready to go so that we can lock in in this window before we pass this time as well, because we will, I mean, we have to. Yeah. So for even for those people that are, you know, the four and a half fives, they're existing um, homeowners uh, refinancing as an option because rates are in the threes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's something we're still looking at. Um, I think, you know, there are definitely people who were, getting prepared and now who you know i've been having conversations for two days having to educate people and say hey we're gonna sit tight for a minute um and kind of see let things level out but um just because they've been jumping around it's just it's so volatile right now it's just it's a bizarre time for sure okay awesome super grateful for you and thank you for just literally speaking off the cuff and yeah without uh 
you know, softball questions in advance, like we typically <laughs> do these interviews. Well, thank and, you for letting me complain. And I'm just happy to jump on my soapbox and tell you, all of the agents of the universe to- You're amazing, trusted partners in this business, not you people. <laughs> you we people. We love you too. Give your lenders a break. Bring them a coffee this week. It is Armageddon at the lender's desk, okay? Yes. So like, don't ask them to run 17 bizarre, meaningless scenarios right now. Okay, yeah. today is not the day. <laughs> That's what I have to say. You're awesome. Thank you, Cynthia. Have a great no day. No problem. Bye, Andy.